So for those of you who may already know me, um, you know me as Kristen Megan, the loudmouth Liberty Enforcer. I am a contributor for Infowars.com, the Next News Network, and a bunch of alternative media sites. I want to tell you a little story about my previous identity. In my previous identity, I'm known as Sergeant Kristen Edwards. 2001, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And in 2001, I figured, you know what, I heard about a bunch of my friends going into the military and it seemed like they could get their college funded and do great things defending this nation. Throughout my career, I was stationed all over the nation, all over the world. I started out in England. My job was in bioenvironmental engineering. For those of you who don't know what that is, if you've ever heard of OSHA, anyone heard of OSHA? Yeah. I followed the health side. So my job was to ensure that everything that the Air Force was doing, that we were tracking the exposures for all military personnel as related to what was the Air Force doing, how did it relate to health, and what was the Air Force doing and how did it relate to environmental impact. I spent almost 10 years in the Air Force. I love to say it was the best 10 years of my life, but I'll tell you about one day that changed my life. My second base was in Oklahoma City at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. How many of you have heard about geoengineering or chemtrails? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have heard it's a crazy loon conspiracy theory? Yeah. I just want to ask you guys one question. Do I look crazy to you? No. Did I? <laughs> did I talk to any plants or walk up here backwards or am I wearing a tinfoil hat? No. I'm not crazy. Throughout my military career in the Air Force, I was made rank my first time. I had four stripes on my shoulder. I had medals like you couldn't believe. I was the exemplary staff sergeant of the United States Air Force. I actually was transferred from one base to another to do a special operation because of my stellar background. When I was at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, I heard about geoengineering and I thought, oh, those crazy conspiracy loons. I'm sure we've all heard of Alex Jones from Infowars.com. Yeah. Yeah. The man I once thought was a loon wearing a tinfoil hat living in a bunker that I just shunned off as, you know, this guy doesn't get it. Did he strap on the uniform? Has he gone out there and defended his country? Well, it was around 2007 that I first heard about geoengineering. And I started to piece the puzzles together like a spouse who thinks they're husband or wife is cheating, when all the dots start to connect, right? Well, part of my job in bioenvironmental engineering was to approve hazardous materials that came on the base. So whether you were using a simple spray can of paint or you were ordering an oil solvent to degrease airplanes, I sat at a computer and I approved those hazardous materials on base and tied them to a process and a building. Now, there are certain things we all know in the military that are classified, right? Yep. So even though I had a security clearance, it says a need-to-know basis. So when I started approving what is called an Air Force Form 3952, the approval of hazardous materials, and I started seeing barium, aluminum oxide, and strontium come on the base from a contractor whose name was not listed, which was not normal. I started to realize that those crazy tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists might not be so crazy. So in 2008, amongst myself, I lived about less than a mile behind the flight line at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City. And due to my background as an industrial hygienist and an environmental specialist, I conducted soil grid sampling and grade sampling. Those of you who may not be too privy to chemistry, you know that there's natural elements occurring in Earth. Aluminum is one of them. However, barium, radioactive, and strontium are not. So I conducted those samples and saw limits in my community that would make your head spin. And I started to realize that those peers within my professional community that were trying to wake those of us in the military up were right. So right when I decided I was on the fence, should I re-enlist? I was pregnant, just so you know, with my now nine-year-old daughter, Nuggie, you'll see her walking around. And I thought, wow, this is my livelihood. Do I question this? 
or do I re-enlist and move forward? Amongst my ignorance, I moved forward, and I re-enlisted again. I raised my right hand in the Constitution, which I had not read all the way through. So after Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, I got transferred to 90 miles south of here, Warner Robins Air Force Base. Anyone know where that is? Yeah, yeah it's like the big hub here in Georgia to uh, fund the military. There's a lot of civilians that work there. It's 85% civilianized, 15% military. While I was at Warner, Warner Robins Air Force Base, let me remind you, I mentioned earlier that I got transferred from one base to another due to my professional background. Because I was such a stellar NCO in the Air Force, they transferred me from one depot maintenance base to the other one in the Air Force, Warner Robins. While at Warner Robins Air Force Base, I thought I was defending my country on a home front, making sure that all those people that went out there, front line, were safe and protected from carcinogens, radiation, inhalation, drinking water, noise, all of it. My job was to protect them so they could be all they can be. In 2009, late 2009, I stumbled upon something that changed my life. I ran across an operation at Warner Robins Air Force Base which was exposing thousands of civilians to carcinogens. Those of you that are familiar with OSHA, in general industry and construction industry, for different constituents known as hazardous materials, OSHA sets levels for which certain employees can be exposed to. Well, what if I told you that these employees were exposed 100 times over that occupational exposure limit? That should probably scare you. That's an acute and an immediate hazard to carcinogens. People were getting sick, people were getting cancer. People had sores in their mouth from something called strontium chromate or chrome-6, a carcinogenic metal used in military operations. So after what I saw at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, and then what I saw at Warner Robins Air Force Base, Georgia, everything that I knew, everything that I thought I knew, this great nation, we are heroes, I had four stripes, on my arm and 11 medals and ribbons on my chest. I thought I was protecting my homeland. When I brought to my commander to his attention that there were people exposed to these hazards, hazardous pollutants and people were getting sick, I'll give you the synopsis of the story. I took these air samples, I took the swipe samples. These people were actually dumb and ignorant enough to threaten me in writing. My threat was, mind you, I had a perfect history. Not one article of paperwork, not one article 15, not one negative aspect on my record. I was the poster child for what an Air Force NCO should be. I was told that if I told the employees, which is required by law, that they were exposed to these materials, that my commander had the authority to lock me up in a mental institution for up to 120 days without being questioned. At the time, my daughter was five years old. I was told, who will take care of your daughter because I was divorced. I was threatened to be locked up in a mental ward for trying to do my job. I was threatened to have my one child who I love with all my life taken away from me because I tried to do the one thing I was trained to do, protect the workforce. So folks, let me tell you, 2001 is when I entered the military. Four stripes on my arm, 11 medals and awards on my chest. But it only took one day to change my life. And that day was October 27, 2010, when I left the United States Air Force at almost 10 years, halfway to retirement. I would have been scot free. I left as a whistleblower of the United States Air Force. I had my life threatened. I was followed. My phones were tapped. I had journalists at my front door. I had no job. I left the United States Air Force honorably as a whistleblower. It is because of what happened to me in the Air Force, an avenue in which I thought I was a hero, an American hero, as we all think those in uniform are. When I realized that we are not honest and that the core values that the United States Air Force taught me were completely just talking points, it made me sick to my stomach. After leaving the U.S. Air Force, I worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs, 
which I figured I would be blacklisted and would never get a job with the U.S. government. Why I work for the U.S. government, I don't know at this point, but it, it was easy to get because I was a disabled veteran. Why I was at the Department of Veterans Affairs thinking I could turn things around? You know what I witnessed? How many of you are veterans here? Right here. Several of you. Dead is. Let me tell you about a little program that the Department of Veterans Affairs has. When you come in with PTSD, depression, anxiety, drinking problem, substance problem, they put you on psychotropic drugs. They put you on psychotropic drugs in which they get kickback for and profit for from Big Pharma. And then when you get addicted, they put you in a program called DDTC. It's called Drug Demand Treatment Center. So once they get you on these drugs that they profited from, they then put you in a program that they get government grants from to put you in rehab. So those of you who are veterans, I would really rethink your care at the veterans facilities. And I know in saying that as a former employee puts a big bullseye on my forehead. But frankly, I don't care. Because let me tell you the difference between 2001 and 2013. I read my constitution, front and back. I read the Declaration of Independence. I read it all. And I stand here admitting to you that I was an ignorant person in the United States military who thought they were a hero. But you know what? Diego, I can tell you, I consider myself a hero or an idol now. Because I put my career on the line as an industrial hygienist who now works in the private sector after leaving the VA. And as a contribute, contributor to Infowars.com, to the next news network, to different avenues which you can spread your message, I realized that instead of dwelling on all the negative that really changed my life, I am here to redeem myself. And I ask you that are veterans, or any of you that are civilian, what do you do in your careers? Do you work in the medical profession? Do you work in an airport? Where do you work? And what do you see? Because I guarantee you, if you step back and you connect those dots, you will see things that never made sense to you before. So as I fight the hatred and the disinformation trolls and those who try to ruin my reputation, for every negative thing I find about myself on the internet, excuse my French, but it pisses me off. And you know what? It makes me pull out some more documents that I took before I left the United States Air Force. And I save them, and I publish them, and I send them to my family members throughout the country. And I have friends tell me, be careful. You know what I tell them? Be careful what? I was in the United States military. They have my social security number, my address, and my cell phone number. They can find me. So what I want to leave with you here today is to tell you, if you know someone who's in the military now, or you know a veteran, <coughs> Engage them. It's your due diligence, whether you or not you agree with, quote, conspiracy websites like Infowars.com or Prison Planet, or whether you believe in geoengineering or chemtrails, please believe me because I saw it firsthand, okay? This is not what I want to be known for. It's a huge target on my back. I ask you to ask those veterans in your family or those friends and ask them to rise up, as Robbie Wells says. Do your part. Defend your nation. Join Oath Keepers. Get in touch with all the alternative media outlets. Support the acts and musicians, you guys. It all matters. I have people tell me, why do you do what you do? There's nothing we can do about it. I know the TSA is unconstitutional, but what can we do about it? Well, let me tell you, I've done things about it, okay? I've shot documentaries. I've done TV shows. I have things in the works I can't even mention so that they don't get edited before they air. You can do something about it. So just remember these numbers, 2001. I thought I was doing good. Four stripes on my arm, 11 medals on my chest. One day to change my life. What day will be yours? Because trust me, it will come. It will directly affect you and you will remember this. So please, rise up, do your due diligence, do your own investigations, and support your military by educating them. Thank you.